This is Sunset Park's 8th Avenue. We know it today as Brooklyn's Chinatown, an incredible place to eat. But 100 years ago, this part of town was almost entirely Scandinavian, particularly Norwegian. Back then, this stretch was called Lapskouse Boulevard, after the hearty and filling stew eaten by their people. It's here, at the edge of the old boulevard, that I come upon a curious looking food cart and order a stew of a different sort. Tai Shan style Tang Yen, rice balls in a pool of velvety chicken broth and bits of meat exploding with flavor. Very delicious and very much not Lapscouse. What the fuck? As I stand at the corner, waiting for my order and watching the avenue's hurried frenzy, I try to picture what the neighborhood was like a century ago. The bakeries and fish markets, umlauts everywhere. And like today, was scarcely a word of English spoken, but then Norwegian instead of Cantonese. The Scandinavians once dominated this place, but to look at it today, you would hardly know it. What happened to them? Where did they all go? What gets lost and what remains when an entire community, its people, its restaurants and public hangouts, its way of life, just completely vanishes from the face of the earth? Let's do this. Alright. Let's do this. Alright, I got this. Hey, what's up world? I hope you're hungry. Yeah, so not too far from here, over on 65th Street, it's really kind of an industrial type of area. There's a lot of auto body shops, hardware stores, appliance places. It's not really a destination type of spot. It's over there close to 8th Avenue, which is like the epicenter of Brooklyn's Chinatown. And every time I would go by there, I would notice these two places that stuck out to me like sore thumbs. The Danish Athletic Club and the Swedish Football Club. You pass by places all the time. You don't think too much of it. But sometimes when you do, you uncover worlds that you didn't even know existed. So as it turns out, there was a major Scandinavian community in the area. I didn't know that. And so those two spots are like the remnants of the community that used to be there. The Scandinavians, for the most part, have long since gone. They're not here in those numbers anymore. They can't support the kind of community that they used to have. Which immediately presents a problem for the show. I mean, how can you do an episode of a show about food and culture about a community that doesn't exist anymore? So I've been thinking about the concept for this episode for a long time now. It's something I've wanted to do for a while. It's always been left on the back burner because, well, the community's gone. You know, how can I do it? How will I be able to get Scandinavian food? Right? This is a show about food. It's the whole point. If they're not here, how can I do the show? So that was always the problem. But fortunately for us, we might have a solution here. And so the answer to our problems is sit in the my. Sit in the my. Sit in the my. No, I'm not having a stroke. <laughs> it means the 17th of May. It's when the Norwegians celebrate the signing of their constitution in 1814, which actually makes Norway's constitution the second oldest surviving one after the United States. Yeah, so this weekend is a big celebration for what remains of the Scandinavian community. So you know we gotta check it out. First up, Viking Fest. It's going to be happening this Saturday at Owl's Head Park over in Bay Ridge. There's gonna be music, there's gonna be games, there's gonna be swords, there's gonna be shields, there's gonna be horn helmets. It's gonna be amazing. Most importantly, there's gonna be food. Finally going to get to try Scandinavian food from people of the community. Gonna get to try some lapskous. Gonna get to try some skulebola, skulebola. Bole, 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 bole. All right, so that's Viking Fest, that's Saturday. On Sunday, we have the Norwegian Day Parade. The Scandinavians are gonna be coming out in full effect. It's gonna be incredible. It's gonna be over in Bay Ridge in the heart of what used to be Little Norway. There's gonna be flags, there's gonna be bands, more horn helmets. It's gonna be great. 
Besides all that, I'm going to be taking us to a couple of great spots I know in the area. I can't wait to take you. You're going to love these places. We're going to eat good. Oh, we're going to eat good. I think it's about time to go, so let's get out of here. All right, guys, we are headed over to Viking Fest. Don't really know what to expect. Bahala. Bahala. So this, uh, this is Viking Fest. Okay. When I got to the fest, I have to admit, I was a little underwhelmed. Where I was hoping to find warriors, raiders, beards, battle axes, bloodshed, glory, I instead found the most adorable gathering of senior citizens. More Viking rest than a Viking Fest. Oh, hey buddy. But my disappointment aside, there was food. Plenty of it. And I finally had my chance to try Lapscouse, the dish that gave 8th Avenue its long lost nickname. Give it a shot and see how it is. Bob Scouse. It's delicious. It's hearty. You know, it's like, you could see why this would be really good in like a really cold climate. You know, this warm you right up. It fills your tummy. It fills your belly. It makes you feel good. This makes me want to lay naked on a bearskin rug with nothing but a Viking hat. It's long, blonde braids on. And I gotta get one of those if they're selling those. <laughs> <laughs> It's a tale as old as time. You use what you have, some great ingredients around you, you cook them down for a long period of time with some great meat, and you create something truly outstanding. So now we're gonna try Skulebola. I like those. Mm. Skulebola is damn good. It's skule delicious. <laughs> it's essentially like a ring of biscuit around like this really decadent custard in the middle and topped with, I think it's coconut. There's like a cinnamony flavor going on. I don't know if there's actually cinnamon in it, but I like this a lot. It's a beautiful day for a Viking fest. I'm hoping we would see like a, like a battle reenactment or something. You know, a bunch of dudes are just going at it or something. Fighting to the death. Yeah, there's some people dressed up in costume, but they're not doing much. Kind of just hanging around, kind of pointing their swords at each other. I want them to really like go at it, you know? <laughs> Alright, so Viking Fest didn't turn out to be exactly how I pictured. But that's okay. Got a couple of treats. Got a little Norwegian crisp bread. We got some fish balls and brine. Why does my can look like this? 
We got some cumin cheese. Don't act like you haven't eaten a block of cheese in the park. Viking Fest, as it turned out, was less about glory, less about triumph, and more about memories, about reminiscing. A chance for Brooklyn's past to come together and relive the good old days one more time. All right, what's a burger? Whenever I'm in serious need of a burger, there's a few joints around town I can always rely on. But around here, nobody does it better than this place, Pier 69 Market. It doesn't look like much from the outside, but don't underestimate it. The burger here can go toe to toe with the best of them. I mean, at the end of the day, is there anything better than a well-made burger? I think so. So there it is, Pier 69 Market. Truly one of the great places in this part of Bay Ridge. Low-key, cool vibes, unpretentious, great food. Poop alert. <laughs> and that burger is just out of this world. It's definitely one of the best burgers in the city and nobody even talks about it. It's a hidden gem if there ever was one. All right, so today we're gonna check out the Norwegian Day Parade. Yeah, hopefully it's a little more festive than Viking Fest. Uh, I don't know, we'll see. It was an incredible sight. As the parade swept through the street, it became abundantly clear 
that the Norwegian community, despite all evidence to the contrary, was very much alive, even if for a day. The flags, the colors, the traditional Norwegian outfits, all together an impassioned howl of a people proud of their history, reclaiming the streets they once owned, refusing to be forgotten. That's what I love about New York, man. The juxtapositioning of cultures just doesn't get cooler than that. One of my favorite things to get at Tortas Morelos is the pambaso. It's a torta with a chorizo, lettuce, tomato, and then they dip it in a chile guajillo sauce. Very messy. The roll is kind of wet, you know, but it's, it's fantastic. It's really good. Uh, inside, I think there's, I don't know if it's beans or if that's just like the roll that's like just been soaked in the guajillo sauce, but it like, it, it adds like an extra like fluidity. No. Hydration, what's the word I'm looking for? A creaminess, that's what I'm looking for. It provides like a creaminess to the sandwich. The birria at Tortas Morello is supposed to be really good. I've never actually gotten to try it, so it's gonna be my first time. I gotta tell you, this looks promising. Typically there's meat in the birria, either beef or goat. Uh, in this one, somehow there's no meat, so I don't know what that means about the flavor, if it's not gonna be as strong, I mean, we'll see. It was so good. I love Birria. I loved it since the first time I ever heard of it. Uh, wanted it, needed it, got it, and loved it. Uh, but I feel like in the past couple years, it's gotten so hyped that a lot of places don't really do it well. For it to not have any meat, it's actually really good. This is the taco. That looks fantastic as well. The uh, tortilla is like crunchy. It's got those like nice little burn marks. The hallmark of a great quality cooked tortilla. Get those like little black pieces that are just burst of flavor. It's my favorite part of cook, a cooked tortilla. And that meat and that cheese and the onion. This looks like a match made in heaven right here. Let's try this. You can hear that crunch as I bit into the tortilla. Great flavor. I mean, what can I say? Just well seasoned. Then dipped in the consomme, you get all that liquid that just kind of carries all the flavor all over your mouth. The beauty at Puerto Morelos, top notch. You can't beat it.
It is so good. Feeding my wife right now. This is how we do it. <laughs> All right, guys, that's a wrap on another episode of Vinny Eat World. Hope you had a good time. Yo, we ate good, didn't we? That burger, that burger is no joke, man. It's one of the best in the city. Just looking at that burger, you knew it was gonna be good. Oh man, and that birria, oof. Oh my God, the crunch on that birria, the flavor of the consomme, and there was no meat in it. There was no meat. What the fuck, how could it be that good? Is there anything left to say? I don't think so. I think you guys know what you gotta know. If you're ever in the area, check these places out. They're even better in person. Guys, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps. Please turn on your notifications so you know when we put out new shit. Man, you don't wanna miss this. It's gonna be good. All right, I'm getting the fuck out of here. I'll see you guys next time. I mean, did I fart? No, I didn't fart. <laughs> I mean... <laughs>